doing some digging around, looking at other programming channels on YouTube and a lot of other really smart people that are publishing Medium articles on topics like functional programming. And I've realized that there aren't many real world examples out there of how you could use functional programming like currying and composition and whatnot and how it could actually benefit your applications. The goal for this video today is to stay away from the super contrived bullshit <laughs> add num to num examples and to actually show you some real world use cases of how you can use functional programming to spike up your applications. Before we get started on these next examples, I just wanted to point out that they will be compounding off each other and that we're going to be looking at and toying with a module called Express. And if you haven't looked at Express yet, I'll have a link in the description, but I just want you to take a quick second and familiarize yourself with it before we get started. In this first example, we're going to be building out a pretty simple error throwing utility that I like to use in my applications. And we're going to talk about why I like to use currying for this utility function. In my first example here, I'm going to write out a function called with error and with error is going to take in a code and a message and it's going to return a function that's going to take in an optional message and we're going to assign a default parameter of this return function. We're going to make the default parameter the message that's passed in above. Now this might sound really stupid, but um, I'm going to explain it. So bear with me. Now all this function is going to be doing is simply throwing a new error, but we're going to actually create our own error message to be thrown so that our API can do something with it eventually. So I'm going to write out throw and then I'm going to assign to the um, native error object. And what I'm going to assign to it is the code above and I'm going to assign the optional message to that error as well. It's going to be called message. Right below it, I'm gonna create a variable called throw HTTP server error. And that's gonna be equal to our with error function here. We're gonna invoke it, pass in a 500 status code for the first parameter. And then the next parameter is gonna be an internal server error occurred. Now to demonstrate how and why this function is super useful, I'm gonna go ahead and write another function below it called foo. And I'm going to invoke this throw HTTP server error function. And then I'm going to have a try catch below that, which invokes foo. And then I'm going to catch the error that's thrown from that. I'm going to log it to the console. Hello, you suck. And then I'm going to log out E. If I switch over to my terminal here and run node curry one.js, I can see that hello, you suck. And then I can see this error was thrown. And I can see here the status code is 500 and the message is an internal server error occurred. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, Brody, I can do this without currying. I don't need to do any trickery or cheeky stuff to get this job done, but I'm gonna show you why it's beneficial to do it with currying. Now imagine I wanted a few more of these error throwing utilities. Say I wanted one for throw HTTP not found. I can pass in a 404 here and then resource not found as my string. And I can do another one here for throw HTTP bad request 400 and then type in bad request. Now there are a few other reasons why currying is so powerful, but in this case, currying allows us to basically pre-configure our functions with certain policy decisions. And what I mean by that is, our program is eventually going to be throwing an error and assigned to that native error object, but we're pre-configuring these options ahead of time so that we get some reusable functionality out of them. These utilities here and the way that we're pre-configuring these with options basically allows us to build modular functional applications in a similar way that you would in object-oriented programming if you were going that approach. There are other advantages to using currying, for example, partially applying arguments to functions, but we'll get to that later on in one of the next videos that gets a little bit more complex and I wanna wait for that. But I just wanted to show you a real world example of how currying can benefit your application. I don't wanna blow this video with too much information, so I wanna make one more example here that builds off of our previous example. But before I do that, I wanna explain some changes that I made to this file. At the top of this file here, you can see that I'm requiring Express. And the reason I'm not using imports is because I'm too lazy to set Babel up right now. But yeah, so I have Express at the top here, 
and then I have my utilities that we created in the last example here. And then at the bottom, I have my server. So I'm just basically instantiating Express, and then I am spinning up a server on port 5000 on localhost. So if I hop over to my terminal and run this code, you'll see app is listening. I have a web server. Ooh. For this example to work, I basically need to tell I need to tell Express to listen on port 5000 for a particular request. So I'm going to do app.get slash users. And if you're familiar with Express, you can pass it a callback here that takes in a request and a response. And for now, I'm just going to do response.json and respond with some garbage just to tell us that it's working. Switch over to my terminal, run my Express API, and then switch into Insomnia, and then make a request to my home IP port 5000 slash users, and then I get success true. Now to move on to the actual example, I'm gonna go back up here to our utility section. I'm gonna create a new function called with error handling, and it's going to take in a callback going to return a function that takes in a request and a response and all this function is going to do is basically act as our top level error handling utility function so it's going to it's going to be an asynchronous function please be familiar with async await it's going to basically await this callback it's going to pass in our request and response here and then anytime we get an error it's going to peel off our code from our error handling utility right here and it's going to peel off the message and it's going to respond for us it's going to do response.status of our code dot json and we're going to do code and then message in here so it's basically like i said it's going to be wrapping whatever function we pass in as a callback. And it's going to just basically pipe the request and response to that callback. And if this callback throws any type of error, we're going to catch the error at the top, very top level of our controller. We're gonna destructure the code and the message off that error. And then we're gonna go ahead and respond for that function with the code and the message from the error. This might sound very complex. I know, there's a lot going on but just bear with me. I'm gonna show you a few more steps here and then it's all gonna make sense. I promise I'm gonna walk through it all. Now that we have a pretty sweet error handling utility that we can use anywhere, I'm going to pull out this little uh, request controller that I have down here for our slash users endpoint. And I'm gonna create a function here called um, get users. And it's just gonna be equal to that. And then pop in get users down here. And if I, restart the server, I should still see everything works perfectly fine. Now in order for us to reap the benefits of our with air handling function, we have to go ahead and wrap our get users with it. So what we're going to do is on line 34, I'm going to create a new variable called get users with air handling. And I'm going to invoke with air handling. And I'm going to pass in our get users. Now before I explain anything, I'm going to go ahead and replace on 41 here where we have get users and I'm just going to replace that with get users with error handling and I'm going to restart my server here and you'll see that the app spins up fine and if I move into insomnia I'm going to go ahead and send a get request and you'll see everything works fine now what's happening here is with error handling is being passed get users initially so that's our callback and with error handling is returning us a function so get users with error handling right now is this function right here that I'm highlighting. So get users with error handling is being passed our request and response whenever we get that request to slash users. That request and response is being piped straight through to our get users function here since that's wrapping it, that's our callback. And in this case, nothing is being thrown inside of this get users function and so our get users function is able to respond for us. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're going to throw an error here in get users and see that our error handling utility catches that error for us and responds accordingly. Now to demonstrate the error handling aspect, I'm gonna pull something off of our query params here called should throw. It's gonna come off of request.query. And basically if should throw is true, 
I'm going to go up here and grab this HTTP bad request utility. I'm going to call that and pass in a custom error message of this is a bad request. Sorry. <laughs> and then I'm going to move into I'm going to restart the server. I'm going to move into insomnia here and show you an example. So if I do just a normal slash get users, you'll see success is true. But if I pass that should throw equals true, it should technically send us an error back. And it does. So we get a 400 bad request. And then we get our status code of 400. And then our message of this is a bad request. Sorry. Now this particular aspect of the example does sound a little bit contrived. But imagine instead of doing this query param throw thing that I'm doing, imagine you had an endpoint that was, you know, actually searching for users or creating a user and you had to do some validation on that request. So you had to check for a valid user ID. You had to make sure that the user actually existed before you did something to the user or something like that. You could throw via these utilities here and just let the up top error handling utility handle all of those errors that are bubbling up. Now, before I end the video, I want to basically recap what we talked about today. I mentioned earlier in the video that currying and higher order functions in this case gives us the ability to pre-configure our functions with certain policy decisions, AKA basically pre-configure our functions with certain options that later in our code allow us to do certain things with them. In our first example, we were able to create an awesome error throwing utility that takes in a code and a message and then when invoked at a later time allows us to pass in an optional message that will throw an error with the code and the message that meets the semantics of our project and we were able to essentially instantiate that with error function and pass in those predefined options in our second example we were able to create a higher order function that took in a callback and wrapped that callback with a try catch. And if anything was thrown inside of that callback, in our case, our get users route controller, it would catch that error and respond accordingly with the error code and the message. And we were able to tie both of these examples together by invoking our throw HTTP bad request higher order function inside of our get users route controller. If there was should throw in our query params, we would throw that bad request error and then our with error handling higher order function would then catch that and then respond accordingly with the correct code and the correct message to our users. The use of currying and higher order functions like this set us up for success in the future when it comes to more complicated functional programming aspects like partially applying and function composition and getting this in your head and being able to understand what we're doing here and starting to build your applications in this way is going to make it so that you can reap the benefits of functional programming in JavaScript. Once again, I hope this video was beneficial. I hope it made sense to you. If it didn't, pull it down, try a few things out yourself. And if it still doesn't make sense to you, leave me a comment, tell me I suck, and I will happily get back to you and, and try to answer those questions for you. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video on functional programming in JavaScript.